Today on The Educators, all parents are not perfect and they all have made their share of mistakes throughout their life. We're sharing should parents apologize to their kids without losing their respect? Plus, we should all love ourselves in the best way possible. Some experts says it's healthy to acknowledge our accomplishments and reward ourselves when we have overcome an obstacle. What do you think? Then, do you love having important conversations? We're giving you the latest on teaching students to have meaningful conversations with their peers. So, let's get started. Welcome to the Educators America. We have so many amazing things in store for you guys today. So let's hop right into it, shall we? Now, as you can see, Andrew is not here on today, but don't you guys worry, he'll be back soon. So Andrew, we miss you and love you so much. So hurry back soon, hurry back soon. All right, so let's get started with the show on today. We got um, the importance of reparenting, how parents who apologize to their kids, should they be doing that or not? Um, then the cause of motivation, is it possible to teach motivation um, you know, to someone in particular? Um, then how about loving on ourselves in the best way possible because that is what we all need right now into the world. And finally, I'm going to wrap up with teaching our students how to have meaningful conversations. So let's dive in into the importance of reparenting. Now, all parents are not perfect, and they all have made their shares of mistakes. And according to ParentCircle.com, I have found that there are times when parents should apologize to their children without losing their respect. Now, the article says when parents use hurtful words um, out of anger and frustration, they should say sorry to avoid inflicting their own kids with long-lasting emotional consequences. So the question I have for myself, since I'm the uncle in here, um, do I believe, do, do I believe in saying I'm sorry to kids or does it weaken your authority? Well, uh, do you believe in saying I'm sorry to kids or does it weaken your authority? Well, I'm not a you know, I'm not a parent just yet, so I'm going to just give, you know, you know, my experience of how I grew up. Um, I don't, parents, do I believe parents should apologize to their kids when they are doing wrong things? I mean, here and there you can, if, 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 if you know, because not everybody because everybody who knows parents, they have different parenting styles. Their own children, right? Yes. Um, but I don't think this will weak, weaken your authority as a parent if you say sorry to your children of whatever they are doing. Now, for instance, I'm just give you an example. You know, let's say, okay, let's let's do teenagers. Or no, let's 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 uh, let, let me start from little kids. I'm gonna go up. Um, and this is just, I'm just good. I'm just giving out a sample, you guys, um, not from my own experience, okay? So, like from little kids, let's say, you know, you are telling them to, um, let's say you're telling them, you know, something that you want them to do, like to eat all of their fruits and vegetables, and they refuse to do that. And I don't know. <laughs> To be honest, you guys, at this point, I really don't know what I'm saying, but, but, but yeah, it just, with me, it just depends on, you know, whatever situation that you're in. If, if you have to say sorry to your children, that's fine. You have to apologize. That, that is totally fine. It just, it just depends on with you and your family. And, you know, like I said earlier, everybody's, you know, who's, who, who's a parent, um, everybody's parenting style is not the same. It's different. Okay. So, um, if, if you want, again, if you want to apologize to your kids, that is totally fine. That is totally fine. But, um, if not, 
then that's um that's fine. Okay, that that's totally fine. So I know that's short, you guys. And um, before we go to break, I just want to point this out that I came across this on social media. You guys, this here. Um, that I just cannot believe this. I know Andrew, he quite touched base onto this a couple weeks back of with um, talking about Black educators building relationships with their students outside of the classroom. Well, I came across this on social media um, on Instagram, um, call me Shivi, the Instagram user, um, that there's a new study, a new study shows that Black male educators spend the most time counseling and building relationships with students outside of classroom. Uh, black male educators spend an additional five hours per week with students. Black male educators are also asked to deal with disciplinary issues with black students at a higher rate than others. Although black students make up 50% of all students, black male educators are only 2% of all teachers. And this is, you guys, this is so sad. I know that this is our main, our, 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 our goal for our funded work is to raise up that 2% of um, um, the black male educators. Because that's ridiculous. That is, that is so ridiculous. And there's not enough of us into this field. And, you know, just like it says here, this new study shows black, yes, and that's true. Black male educators spend the most time counseling and building relationships with students outside classroom and i'm gonna just give my two cents on to this because andrew he did this a couple weeks back um <laughs> i'm gonna just i'm gonna just i'm gonna just put this out there i'm gonna just put this out there don't come at me don't at me on social media this is how i feel this is how i feel but i'm gonna just say some i'm not gonna say all let me rephrase it some White teachers truly don't care about our students. I'm gonna just say it. I'm gonna just say it. The only ones who truly care is our black educators if they are into this field because they genuinely want that bond with their students. This is I I I and I know and I'm still quite rambling on if I still want to go into this profession because I do want some change to happen to education system I really do but is it worth it is it worth it for me to go into this profession that I truly believe in I don't know I don't know I, I really don't know I really don't know so that's why you know I constantly you know it at the start of the show, right, right from the beginning, back in 2019, I kept preaching over and over and over. You have to have a relationship with your students. You have to. You have to. That's the only way. I'm sorry. That's the only way that, for me, that you will, you know, be a better teacher. Okay. So um, we have to take a break, but there's more topics on the way. So don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to The Educator. Now let's hop right back into some more topics. Now, I came across this according to trainingindustry.com. You can teach a salesperson to use a new career um, information system, but can you teach them um, to be motivated to use it consistently each week? Well, you can learn the new procedure for completing your expensive reports, but can you learn how to be motivated to submit them on time? Mm, so here's the question I have for myself on today. Do you think motivation can be taught? And what's the cause of those who never are motivated? Mm, well, Here's what, here's what I'm, and, and I know I do this on the show. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a type of a motivation person. That's the type of person I am. Um, so do you think motivation can be taught um, to everyone? No, no, not every single person is it possible to teach motivation. No, to everyone, because not everyone, they don't to me, they don't have that mindset or they just, you know, basically don't really want to hear what you have to say. They don't really have to, oh, 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 I know you can do this, keep pushing, keep going. They don't want to hear that. Some people, not all people, some people, they just don't want to hear that from others. They possibly want to hear from themselves, from what they do, you know, you know, do, you know, um, you know, looking themselves into the mirror or whatever, or they just really don't care. Some, some of the times, um, you know, when you say motivating things to people, try to encourage them, uh, that works well with some people, like successful people, um, celebrities, some celebrities, not all celebrities, but with average and original people, mm, not as always, not as always, um, but yeah. And you know, like, like like I just said, like I'm the type of motivated person. And I know I mentioned this, you guys, um, a couple months back, that you know I have a daily affirmation um, that 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 I quite, you know, I, I try to almost say it every single day if I can. You know, once I wake up, I try to say these two things. The first, which I had shared with you guys, um, which is. Um, Today, um, no, which is uh, something good is going to happen to me today and something good is going to happen through me today. Um, as Christ said, that something good is going to happen in my life and something good is going to happen through me today. There I go. And that is by Jewish Viner. Um, I try to say that quite some days you will not feel like it because I want something like I said mentioned that episode, I want something good to happen in my life. I want something good to happen to me, even if it doesn't happen to me on that day or that week or the next week or the next month, I know that my blessing is on its way. If I just keep on, you know, keep on having a faith, keep on being positive, keep on treating people the way that I want to be treated in return and doing the things you know that I'm supposed to do on a daily basis, then things are going to happen in my life. But if I'm doing this to people, treating them like trash, thinking all the negative thoughts, this and that, then my blessing is not going to come. That, that, that's, that, that, that's just my feeling. It. My blessing is not going to come because of the daily, of, 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 of what I am doing on a daily basis. Okay. So um, just, just, just think about that, you guys. Think about that, you guys. Um, you can motivate people, and others you just can't. And also, the other uh, motivating thing, the quote I, I, I try to say every day as well is to be the best. And it's on to my social media account, you guys. So make sure you follow me on there. Um, which is be the best version of you and only you. And also remember that. Don't try to be, you know, um, somebody else that you're not. Be you because you are unique. You are special. You are important. You matter. You matter. So be yourself. Be yourself, you guys. Okay. So truly be yourself. All right. So uh, coming up next, going to be educators. 
Um, loving on yourself in the best way possible. Don't you just, we gotta love ourselves. You guys gotta love ourselves. Mm -mm -mm. I, I certainly do. I love myself and you guys should too as well. So we're gonna dive into more into that. And then later on, we're gonna be teaching students how to have meaningful conversations inside the classroom and also outside the room. So don't go in because you know what you're doing. Welcome back to the educators. So let's hop right back into some topics. You can show me. I'm sorry, so I just uh, just hit myself. I just hit my finger and it hurt. But all right, so let's dive in into this. So I was reading about the importance of self care and me time. You guys, yes, I was. Now get this. Expert says it's healthy to acknowledge your your accomplishments. And even reward yourself when you have overcome an obstacle. So the question is, you guys, when do you feel you deserve a reward? And how do you reward yourself? Well, uh, um, hmm. okay, I have to really think on this, you guys. Because to be honest, I don't, like, I... When do you feel you deserve a reward? Okay, so let me answer that. When do I feel that I deserve a reward? When I have accomplished what I plan on doing of what I said that I was going to do. If I said that I was going to do this and I do it and you know it takes me all day or even a week or perhaps a month and I work my tail off each and every day, non-stop. I don't take no breaks. I constantly work at it. Of course, you deserve yourself uh, uh, a reward. Don't you agree? You absolutely, you, you deserve yourself a reward because you earn it. You work hard toward it. And um, so, yeah, and then the second question, um, how do you reward yourself? Well, I reward myself by, huh, huh. I don't know. How? Wait a minute. And to be honest, you guys, really nothing. To be honest, thinking back, like when, when I have accomplished something, my own reward is to relax, to lay down. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I don't. 
Well, probably here and there, you know, if I do have me some snacks, you know, a woman some snacks, like I don't know, they just, oh, yes, I need that, I need that. And speaking of snacks, you guys, okay, now I'm going off, um, I'm going off task. But speaking of snacks, oh my gosh, you guys, my favorite, and I believe I mentioned this on the show, um, Andrew, <laughs> and if you guys, um, it, it's just my favorite. I don't know if you guys have heard of, well, I don't know what's the correct terms for them because there's there it's different. You have peach rings, then they're called um, peach gummy rings or whatever, but I call them peach rings. And you guys, I am obsessed with those. I am I am obsessed with those snacks. It's just I don't know about it. It's just my favorite. It's my all time favorite. I can have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I can eat it pretty much all day, every day. Seriously, you guys. So I just, I just had to mention that into there. But yeah, like here and there, sometimes, um, if I do have some snacks, I you know I warm myself with that, um, or probably you know warm myself with some dinner, have some dinner, um, dessert, ice cream, I love ice cream, vanilla ice cream, um, all time favorite. But yeah, but pretty much the only thing is, yeah, I just relax, lay down. Because after that hard work, ooh, don't you deserve it? Don't you deserve it? Yes. Oh my gosh. So, mm, 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 yeah. All right. All right. So, yeah. Um, so, it's time for another break, you guys. And we'll be right back with another topic. So, stay right there. Don't move, you guys, because you're watching the educators. Come on back. Welcome back to the educator. So you guys, let's dive into this topic right here. Um, teaching students how to have meaningful conversations. So um, this crucial life and before um, before I dive into this, you guys, it is so important for our students to have important, you know, these important and really tough conversations with themselves, um, with their peers with their families especially you know you guys ever since you know this pandemic you know started you guys you know we have seen you know the killing of you know george floyd um, we saw you know brianna taylor you know and so many others you guys and he has you know brought us you know to really have this important conversation you know we had the black lives matter movement and so on and so on so it's for all of us not just 
all into our strategy guys, but all of us, we have to have these important conversations with ourselves. And I know you guys, I did an episode of this onto my other show, Danny Talks Education. I will have a link to where you guys can check out that. And we also have some conversation onto this show as well, some of the deep important combos. Um, so let's talk about our students, okay? So this, this crucial life skill, it just improves with classroom practice and many students may benefit from a refresher, you guys, okay? So take a moment, you guys, educators, listen very closely, you guys, okay? Teachers, please, teacher assistants, whoever's watching my show, oh, my, this, uh, I was doing so, so good, you guys, so good until now. You guys just pay attention to what I'm about to say here, okay? So just take a moment and reflect on conversations you have had recently with your students. What made your best conversations genuine? Did you feel hard? I mean, did you feel heard? Did you did you understood? How could you tell? Did you want to talk to that person or to that group of people again very soon? What about conversations that were ungenuine and unsatisfying? What was different about them? Well, you guys, the bottom line of this is that conversations are incredibly important. Like I mentioned earlier, they are. We have to keep on having these conversations, you guys, these important, uncomfortable conversations, you guys, we have to, okay? Um, and they are a basic unit of all kinds of interactions, formal and informal, um, serious and not serious, you know, courteous and not courteous, you guys. And the list, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. So whenever we engage with other people, especially one other person, the nature of the conversation we have influence whether it will accomplish what we want, you know, out of the outcome that strengthens our relationship with other people. Okay, so I'm going to dive on down into this, you guys, with uh, I got about three bulletin points to really point out to you guys. Uh, so jot these down if you can. I may, you know, have some important uh, keywords um, to take away from this one to the screen. So the first we have is guiding students toward good conversations. Now, good conversations typically cover six broad areas. You have social um, inadequate, um, clarity of communication, reappropriation, re showing interest and engagement, um, perspective, taking and inclusion, and finding common ground. Now, if you teach your students to keep these areas in mind before a conversation and during conversations, it's very likely that their experience will go reasonably well. And I believe that as well. I believe that as well. Um, so yeah, so yeah, keep that in mind, you guys. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind when your students are, you know, right before, you know, they are about to have these conversations and also during. Make sure that those six broad areas that I just mentioned, you know. It, it, it leads on into the conversation, if that makes sense, because if that makes sense, I hope it does, okay? Um, so number two, our second bullet point, is to creating opportunities to improve conversational skills. Now, as with most important skills, practice leads to improvement, right? Right, absolutely, because absolutely, absolutely. The most social and emotional learning programs offer opportunities for conversation, even though they tend to define what they are doing in other terms. Now, here's an example. More meetings from the responsive classroom program can be thought of as an example of group conversations. So can sharing and other kinds of circles found in social decision making or social problem solving open circle, restorative practice, which we have discussed up to the show, and other related programs. Now, what often is missing, though, is skill development in this area. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And um, to go on down with this, um, teachers, you can help your students develop norms designed to create a brave conversation space and responded to students' existing conversational skills, yes, and help them to engage in active, um, reflective listening, get involved, get involved, appropriate conversation styles, and patient focus attention. Don't we need that? We gotta stay patient, you know, when we're having it because we can't all, when you were wrong about this, when you, we got, you, let's hear each other out first. Let that other person finish what they have to say. Be patient, be respectful. Let me have my two sentences of that and we can go back and forth, have uh, respectfully, not just, well, you know what about this? You no, know. no, let's be patient with others. Even if we don't agree with each other, let's hear them out. Let's hear them out. Let's be respectful because that, that's what we need to teach our students, especially the guys in these days and times in today's world. Because our students these days, you guys, I don't know what has happened because I, I know before the, before the pandemic, the day was worse. But uh, now I think they're even more worse because I remember back when I was working. Um, as a teacher assistant at an after school school, at the at a after school um, children program, I remember that the students that I had, that I had worked with the second graders and also with all the students there as well, um, there was like one day or, or I don't know, and, and I believe I mentioned this story, well, probably not on to here, probably on to my other show, Andrew, but anyways, I remember you guys that right like after because this was like the week before spring break. I remember this one week and I remember to this day all the students, including my students, the second graders, everything was going very smoothly, you know, they're doing their work, this and that, very respectful to me, which I was kind of like a little surprised because it, it just, it, it's a long story, I'm not going to dive into that, but the next week, spring break, right, then that following week after spring break, I don't know what happen i don't know what happened with those students uh, while they was out of school from spring break but when i tell you something changed in all of the students not only my group of second graders but with the middle school students the elementary students i don't know something happened to where they just you know, they just want to let it free, let it free. Let's just be res disrespectful to Mr. Damien and to all of the teachers. Oh my, and I remember our, when, when we uh, took our children outside to play, oh my. Oh, like how, how? This pandemic, you guys, this pandemic has really made our students be really disrespectful toward each other and to their teachers like gosh but yeah i just i just had to add my two cents into that but yeah but the bottom line is we have to be patient we have to be patient when we are having these conversations right and so um i have some conversation prompts for you guys so here is a week's worth of conversation prompts based on a and this is this is on you can do this in here's a january theme i'm trying to say here's a january theme of planning for the future so this is for the month of january and you can you know you know incorporate down on you know into the you know into later months february march whatever but listen to this january theme prompt right here and i have lots of bullet points for this you guys so pay close attention so one is a new student just arrived at your school. What do you think it feels like to be living in a new place with all new people? Has this happened to you? Okay. Uh, what is one action you can take in middle school now that will help prepare you for your dream job of the future? I love that there. 
Um, the next is, what is it like to work in a group where others do not communicate effectively to solve a problem? And how can you non-verbally demonstrate that you are actively listening to your peers? And finally, not every moment in our lives is going to go well. Preach on that there. But when bad things happen, we have to try to learn from those situations. Absolutely learn from your mistakes. Because I remember, and you hit the topic of today's, I'm probably not going to paraphrase, um, quote him exactly, but he said that um, learning opportunity is it, it is something with learning opportunity was something, something, which means that we have to learn from our mistakes because we can't just, if we, if, if we did, like, we can't expect, like, if this thing happened, I mean, if this didn't happen, if this didn't work out, why do it again that, you know, it didn't work out the first time? Why not try to change something about it? Be a problem solver, fix your mistakes. Because if you keep doing the same thing constantly over and over and over again, how are you learning from that? That doesn't make sense with me. That doesn't make sense with Damien Anderson over here. It doesn't. I don't know why I just said that, but it, it, it doesn't make sense to me at all. It's just dumb. It's just dumb. Okay. Um, so think about a bad moment in your life and challenge your thinking around how this event helped you. Okay. Now, here is a set of prompts that could be used during a fall week. So let's say perhaps, you know, you could use this probably, you know, this week or, you know, next week, whichever. Whom do you admire most? What are some qualities that you admire about this person that you would like to see in yourself in the future? Small miracles happen every day. What could you do to raise your awareness of these miracles? What does charity mean to you? Mm, that, that's a good one right there. That's a good one right there. What does charity mean to you? Do you need to give money, food, or clothing in order to help others? And how else can you do it? That's a good one right there because charity means different for uh, many people. It does. For many people, it means different. Why? I don't know. But people think it's what, no, it's not whatever. To me, it's not whatever. It's about helping, you know, raise calls to a certain organization to help them out if they are struggling. That's what charity means to me. Okay. Um, what effects can stress have on your body? Why is it important to monitor your stress level and how do you do it? And finally, what are you most passionate about that might serve as a future career for you? And how can you do more of what you love doing? So think about those, you guys, think about those right there. So that is teaching students how to have meaningful conversations um, with others. So I hope you enjoy that there because it is important. I'm, I'm gonna just leave all of this again before we go to break. It's important, it's important, it's important. I cannot stress this enough. Stress this enough. It's important for us, especially our students, to sit down, discuss what is what what is the current state of the world, whatever the issue may be. Let them sit down. Let them talk to you. Let them talk to their friends about these things that are happening into our world. Because our students, you guys, believe it or not, they are seeing everything that is happening right now as I am speaking. They are seeing it. They are breathing it. They are living it each and every day. And our students need to be heard. We have to let our students have a voice. And I know Andrew absolutely 100% agrees with me. We have to let our students be heard. Because if not, 
How in the world do you expect for them to truly understand whatever you are teaching, whatever you do doing inside of your own classroom, and, and your student has no say into the process? They have no say into the process. That's what bugs me for deaf you girls. Deaf both me to deaf, and that is part of my purpose. Um, onto my show, Damien Talk, Damien Talks Education, is for is for if I can speak on today, is for our students to have a voice because we have opinions. They have opinions, you guys. They have a voice. Let them be heard. Hear them out. Don't just always cut them off. Like, all right, yes, yep, yeah, move on. What? No, no, that doesn't work with me. That doesn't work for me. So the bottom line is let your student, let your students have a voice. Let them have a say so into um a conversation okay so we have to take a break you guys and we'll be right back to wrap up our show for today so don't go anywhere please don't worry, you guys watch your page cares Welcome back. What a great uh, show today. Wasn't it from the importance of reparenting parents who apologize to their kids uh, to the cause of motivation? Is it possible to teach motivation with others? Um, then we have loving on ourselves is the best way possible. And finally, teaching our students how to have a meaningful conversation. So I hope you took something from one of those topics, you guys, that I discussed on today. And I hope you took I hope you took something from each and every one of them. If not, here's just the one thing that I just want you to take. If you didn't learn nothing else from today's show, is this right here? Be you, okay? Be you. I'm gonna go back to the quote I said earlier into the show. Be the best version of you and only you. And always remember that. Always remember that. Okay. So I have motivation affirmation on today. Now, this is going to be a little different. No, no, no. Never mind. Never mind. I'm thinking about something else. You guys, I'm thinking about next week's show. My bad. Um, so today's motivation affirmation for you guys is I'm freeing myself from fear and stress. I will not be afraid. I will not panic. And I can choose to be happy even if I'm not in a perfect situation. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that is your motivation affirmation for today and for the week. So let that uh, go out into you for the rest of the week and I hope you guys are having a great Wednesday and to continue on having the great rest of your week so that is our show for today thanks for tuning in thanks for watching we really do appreciate all you guys and make sure to tune in right back here next week for all new episodes of the educators see you guys <laughs>